It's probably not that hard to guess that I'm a Puyo fan considering the fact that my banner is a wallpaper from Puyo Puyo 2. But what's probably not as easy to guess about the Puyo Puyo series is that despite being a puzzle game, it's a series with a decent amount of lore. Now some of you might not know this, but the entire Puyo series itself is actually a spin-off of a dungeon crawler RPG series called Shin Maru Monogatari. I'll just be calling it SMM for simplicity's sake. One thing that I always liked about the SMM series is despite how bizarrely dark the series was, no seriously, there are scenes where you decapitate your enemies and watch children melt. I also like how it just adds a whole lot in terms of lore for the characters in the Puyo series. Like did you know Aurel actually has a dad? Yeah, apparently the reason why Aurel even wears her blue and white outfit is because it's in honor of her dad who apparently went missing after fighting a necromancer. Oh, and to add to that, Aurel's mom died when she was a newborn which is kind of insane because in the first SMM game, Aurel's only like 4 years old. Which means she's essentially been an orphan this whole time. Which is weird to think about, because literally none of this is ever explained or elaborated on in the Puyo games. You could literally go your whole life playing the entire Puyo series, and you'd have no way of knowing this bit of Aro lore, despite her being one of the main protagonists. Let's go back to the thing about Aro's outfit real quick though. Now Aurel has obviously had plenty of design changes over the years. Hell, if I showed you Aurel in SMM and the most recent Puyo game, I think it'd be fair if you assumed they were different characters. Besides them sharing similar colors in their outfits, the only real similarities they have is being brown haired girls. But even then, their outfits still have a few differences from each other. Despite this though, Aurel claims that she wears the same clothes every day. Like straight up. She says she wears the same clothes for 365 days a year. Now that's just disgusting, Arl. You need to wash her clothes now. Now she's very clearly lying about this if you consider all her outfit changes, but I like to think Arl is actually telling the truth, and after the 365th day, that's when she finally changes her clothes and wears her new outfit for the rest of the year. Oh wait. I forgot, in Puyo Puyo Da she actually isn't wearing her usual outfit. And in Puyo Puyo 7 she has a school outfit. And in that one Puyo Puyo Quest Japanese mobile game there are multiple versions of her in different outfits that aren't her armor. So I guess Aurel is a Weasley little liar after all. Now Aurel's always been a bit of a tomboy even back in SMM. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say that nowadays, she's a lot more toned down than she used to be. Aurel has also stated that she doesn't like proper etiquette such as hand sanitation. Now if I'm gonna be blunt here, hand sanitation isn't really something I'd consider quote unquote proper etiquette. I thought it was just being a decent human being, but to each their own I guess. This character trait actually makes sense though when you consider she possibly doesn't wash her clothes. I guess Aurel is just a very dirty and stinky person. On the topic of Aurel being a tomboy, I think it's interesting to note that Aurel has pretty much no feminine interests, at least in the Puyo games. In Puyo CD, she complains about not being ready for love. This is possibly due to her implied crushes she's had on some of the characters that just end up leading nowhere. Like Skezu, who she now makes fun of for being a supposed pervert, and Satan, who is just straight up a creep towards her. But also, apparently Aurel has also had a crush on her kindergarten principal as well. Aurel has some pretty interesting tastes to say the least. One cool thing about Aurel is just how skilled she is portrayed when it comes to using spells. Ironically though, despite her parents being born with powers, Aurel wasn't. I guess she simply inherited their skills. And of course many of her chain attacks are based off of the attacks from SMM. What I find most interesting though 
is that apparently Aurel shouldn't spam her attacks because she has a limit to it as shown in SMM when her fingers start bleeding after spamming Ice Storm. She apparently ends up giving herself frostbite by doing this. This is pretty ironic considering the point of Puyo games is chaining as many attacks as possible and technically spamming as many attacks as possible too. Now over the years, Arl has developed many relationships and friendships with the cast, but her closest relationship has to be with Carbuncle. They are almost always together, and out of the whole cast, Arl is the only one who can actually understand what Carbuncle is saying, since all Carbuncle ever says is, Side note here, but in the Puyo Pop Fever dub, which is the first time a Puyo game has ever been dubbed, Carbuncle, instead of saying, Gugu, says, Ta -da! Which I just think is hilarious. I wish in the current Puyo games, they throw in a few Tadas here and there, just as a nod to Puyo Pop Fever. Adding on to the Carbuncle lore, Carbuncle used to be Satan's pet, and even though Carbuncle always joins Arl on her quest to defeat Satan in the Puyo games, Carbuncle actually doesn't dislike Satan that much. He just prefers Arl as a friend. Also, supposedly Arl reminds Carbuncle of his original owner, Lilith. Who is Lilith? Well, Lilith is actually Satan's wife, and even though she's only made a few appearances in the SMM games, she's actually one of the most important characters in the SMM and Puyo series. For starters, she literally created the Madu world, which is the world where Arl is from. Now this next bit of lore actually makes an aspect of the Puyo games come full circle. Let me explain Arl and Satan's relationship for those unaware. Basically how it goes is Satan has a huge crush on Arl. Arl's feelings are not mutual. Arl is constantly mean to Satan for this reason. So here's the deal. Satan believes that since Carbuncle likes Arl, that this is a sign that he must marry Arl. Now here's the kicker. The reason why Carbuncle likes Arl and the reason why Arl reminds him so much of her isn't simply because they resemble each other but it's because Aurel is the reincarnation of Lilith, which means Aurel is essentially the reincarnation of Satan's wife. Again, you would literally never know any of this if you only played the Puyo games. But this at least explains why Satan is always chasing after Aurel in the Puyo games, since you just have to assume he's just the you-know-what word. Well actually, that might still be true anyway since in the new Maru world, he implements this no aging rule so that Aurel would be 16 forever. Come on now, Satan. Do better. As for Lilith, here's just a bit of lore that I can gather from her. Before the start of the first SMM game, Lilith was regarded as the protector of man. She of course eventually romances Satan. The way she was able to create the Maru world was by using an artifact called the Seraphim Orb. But apparently when she did this, she lost her physical form and went off to ascend to a higher plane of existence where she became the guardian of the world. In Maru Monogatari, Chaotic Final Exam, Lilith actually has an encounter with Arl. In this game, Lilith asks what Arl wants to do with the Seraphim Orb. Arl says her only intentions are to save Skezo. It pleases her that Arl has no intention of reshaping the world or anything like that. So it seems for the most part in the end, Lilith was actually a pretty good-natured person, which is a shame considering she's dead. It'd be nice if she got any major appearances in future Puyo games, but that's probably not gonna happen. So that's all I really have for today. There's a lot more that can be said about Arl considering that I mostly went over her SMM backstory rather than solely focusing on the Puyo series. But there's just too much to be said about Arl when you put the Puyo and SMM series together. I've wanted to make a Puyo lore video for some time now, but I never knew how to because I knew I would have to touch up on the SMM lore, since it's essentially the backbone for lore for the early Puyo games. On top of that, there's just too much more stuff out there than you even realize. For instance, there are SMM and Puyo Puyo mangas that I desperately wish I had access to, but I don't because I don't know Japanese. Because of that, I decided to lower the scope of this video and simply just talk about Arl, but even there, there was a lot to cover. This video is simply just the tip of the iceberg, and I might discuss Arl more if I ever make follow-up videos and eventually reach the Puyo Pop Fever series, 
since the entire series essentially goes through a reboot and takes place in a completely different universe by that point. I would also like to say in advance, if I got anything wrong, feel free to correct me. Again. Again, this is because a lot of early Puyo stuff and SMM stuff is in Japanese and well, I don't know Japanese. Anyways, thanks for watching. Consider doing all of this stuff. Bye.